during the small amount of free time I had while we were in Hanoi in March 1977 at the Woodcock Commission. I went out just walking around the center of the city, near the government buildings, and standing there looking at how poor the country was, how little they had, no food, no commerce. And I thought to myself, how could it be that the United States of America that had just 20, 25 years earlier fought World War II, a war in Europe and a war in the Pacific against two enemies infinitely more economically powerful, more militarily powerful than North Vietnam, that we had prevailed over both of them. How could it be that we that had the most powerful military force in the world, the most powerful weapons, nuclear weapons, atomic bombs, how could we have lost a war had the incredible disgrace of retreating out of the country, being chased out by this peasant army. How could that have ever happened? And I'd struggle over the next years to answer the question. But what I finally came to see was that we lost the war because our people lost the will to pursue it. That our country became so divided at home. So many convinced that the sacrifice of American lives was not worth the goal and that we needed to leave, that that will was shattered, and with it the resolve to continue, and the resolve to continue to commit young lives to the effort and large amounts of our treasure, that that was the vulnerability that we had. That was how American military power could be neutralized and even defeated. And so in 2019, end of my 52 year journey through foreign affairs, and I look and see our country is divided again and with whatever adversaries you might think we have, is it Russia, China, parts of the Middle East, wherever you think we have adversaries in the world today, as divided as our country is, we will inevitably be weaker in confronting those adversaries. And so for those countries that cannot match our military power, our nuclear weapons, their goal will be, their strategy will be, what can we do to divide the American people from each other? And I see this happening on almost a daily basis. And foreign entities are seeking, and they're very good at it, and very clever. How can they plant further seeds of dissolution so that the bond that holds Americans together, that bond that brought 
American servicemen, always to the defense and rescue of their comrades, to shatter those bonds and shatter the will of the American people. That to me is the great lesson of Vietnam. And I worry that as a country, we may not have fully learned that lesson and may not be aware of its implications 40 years later in the 21st century. History may repeat itself. I hope not, but we need to be aware of the lessons of history, especially of Vietnam.